Hello and welcome to my video series Beginning TDD, a hands-on example. We are going to explore test-driven development and we'll do that using Visual Studio 2015 and we'll re-implement list of T by using test-driven development. We will use xunit.net as our unit testing framework and we will use Git as source control. And that's why you can also download all the source code that I've implemented at github.com, Fiox and beginning TDD. You can see the link down below. So why should you be interested? Well, um, ideally you know a little bit about automated testing, so you know how to write uh, test methods and how to write test classes, but maybe that's all you ever have done in automated testing and you want to learn more how you can validate and drive your code with tests up front. Or maybe you're just interested in test-driven development and how it's done in Visual Studio with xunit.net. But if you have more experience in this field, maybe this video series is not the perfect one for you. Anyway, some theory of what I'm going to do. Um, hopefully you've heard about the red-green refactor cycle which actually was enhanced in, in the last year around with an, another commit phase. That means that we first write a failing test that's red, then we write a, a, as much production code as needed to go green. Then if we want to, we can refactor our stuff, the test code as well as the production code as we see fit. And the final step is to commit to a repository. Usually you use a distributed repository such as Git, the centralized versions like Subversion. I wouldn't recommend them any longer. Uh, when you saw Git in action, you really know why it's better. Another thing I will try to accomplish is to write first tests and first is just a paradigm with um, the following uh, features. Your tests should be fast, your tests should be isolated, uh, which means that they are not influenced by other tests, uh, for example, that uh, you do not have to run other tests before this um, very specific test uh, so that it can actually be completed correctly. Uh, your tests should be repeatable so that you can just run them when you like. Uh, they should be self-validating so a test tells you if it fails or not. And they should be written in a timely manner that, which means a test should be written before the actual production code that it covers. And the last thing that I'm going to do is using a technique called devil's advocate. What does this mean? Um, if I write a test, I only write as much production code as I need to satisfy the test I previous, previously written. Which means that um, sometimes uh, the production code uh, makes the tests go green, but it isn't actually the code that I wanted. And this forces me to write more detailed tests that actually specify what the produ production code should look like. Um, normally you write the correct production code when another um, implementation wouldn't be as easy as the correct one. And to write the tests in such detail that the simplest implementation is actually the correct one, that's a technique called devil's advocate. And this technique is mostly used in pair programming. So there are two developers who will write some codes and usually one of these developers will write the tests and the other one the production code that fulfills these tests. 
So if you are actually alone, as I am when I created uh, the videos for this cast, I the, the whole technique is called Gollum style because like Gollum, you fulfill two characters, the, the, the bad one, the, the devil's advocate who writes just as much as production code as needed, even if it's incorrect. And you, when you've finished with this part, you um, go back to um, the, the other character who actually writes the tests. Okay, so let's get going. We'll jump over to Visual Studio, set up the project and write our first test. So here we are and you see that I created a local git repository that I will later publish to github. And the first thing I'm gonna do is to create a new class library that will serve as my production code. And in there will be the implementation of list of t. And afterwards, I'll create a, another project and add it to this solution. And this is where my test code will reside. You should always um, divide your production and your test code so that you can easily deploy the production code to your customers, but they do not get to get hold of the code that you used for testing. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a reference to my production project and afterwards I will install XUnit, uh, the unit testing framework I'm gonna, going to use. And XUnit is currently available in two formats. You have the uh, stable version 1.9 but I will use the pre-release version 2.0 it's going to be released soon, so I thought it would be more useful to use this version in this video. Afterwards, I install the Visual Studio XUnit runner so that I can execute my tests in the Visual Studio Test Explorer. Okay, and then I will write my first test. Uh, in here, I'm going to create a so-called fact and as you can see, a test method in xunit.net must be decorated with this attribute. And within the my first test method, I will uh, run through the arrange, act and assert phase, which every test should do. So um, in the arrange phase, I will create my test target, new list of int, and afterwards I'll try to add 42 to this collection and afterwards in the um, assert phase I'll try to check if the count is actually increased. And when I get rid of these namespaces that automatically um, provide me access to the list of T implementation that comes with the .NET framework, now I'm forced to create a class that is called list of t. Um, so that this test will even compile. Uh, as you can see here, I create the corresponding class and I'll bring in the namespace in the um, test file so that I can um, make this test actually compile. So a test being read can actually mean two things. The first thing is that your test cannot be compiled or the other thing is that uh, your test can be compiled but it threw an exception when the test runner executed it. And this normally uh, takes place when the assert phase is hit because every assert statement throws an exception if the um, corresponding condition is not fulfilled. And to make this test compile, I'll have to add a add method to my list of T implementation and I also have to add a count property to my new class. This is what the test dictates and now it's compilable.
<clears throat> if I execute this test now, we will see that it turns red, which means that the um, code does not do semantically what it's supposed to do. And this means that I have to write as much code in my new class so that this is fulfilled. That's why I um, delete the um, exception in the add method so that th there's no exception thrown when this method actually executes. And of course, um, if I'll try to run the test now, I'll see that count is actually uh, zero when I try to um, read from the get or, or get the, the value behind the property. And if I change this to one, then my test actually turns green. Yeah, and that's basically it. That is our first test. We set up the system under test, our list of T, and we saw that we can use the facts attributes in xunit.net to uh, decorate test methods that the test runner should actually execute. So this is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope to see you again in the next one. See you soon.